In this video, I will walk you through free response question number five from the 2023 AP Calculus exam. This problem is primarily about finding derivatives and integrals using tables. The functions f and g are twice differentiable. The table shown gives values of the functions and their first derivatives at selected values of x. Part A. Let h be the function defined by h of x equals f at g of x. Find h prime at 7. Show the work that leads to your answer. We can find an expression for h prime using the chain rule, which says that when you take the derivative of a composite function, first you take the derivative of the outer function. So we have f prime. The inner function stays the same, but then the chain rule demands that we multiply by the derivative of that inner function. So this is h prime. We can find h prime at 7 by plugging in 7 for all the x's. So now we have this. We just need to use the table to evaluate from the inside out. According to the table, g at 7 is 0. And we are going to multiply by g prime at 7, which is Eight. So now we need to find f prime at 0. And according to the table, f prime at 0 is 3 over 2. So h prime at 7 equals 3 over 2 times 8. You could stop here, or you could simplify and put h prime at 7 equals 12. Part B. Let k be a differentiable function such that k prime equals f of x squared times g of x. Is the graph of k concave up or concave down at the point where x equals 4? Give a reason for your answer. Here's a chart showing the graphical relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime. This comes up all the time, so make sure you have this chart memorized. In fact, I recommend that you draw this chart either on a piece of scratch paper or in the margin before you take every test or quiz. So, the original function will be concave up if the second derivative is positive, and concave down if the second derivative is negative. So, our strategy will be to find an expression for k double prime, and then evaluate it at x equals 4. If k double prime is positive, then k is concave up. If k double prime is negative, then k is concave down. To find an expression for k double prime, we need to take the derivative of k prime. This is going to require the product rule and inside of that, the chain rule. Let's start with the product rule. I am viewing k prime as this yellow function times this blue function. According to the product rule, the first time through, you take the derivative of this yellow function. So I'm going to do that now. But taking the derivative of f of x squared requires the chain rule, which says that first you take the derivative of the outer function. So I'm going to move this 2 to the front. We reduce that exponent by 1, so that's nothing. And we leave the inner function alone. But the chain rule demands that we then multiply by the derivative of that inner function. So what you see here is the derivative of the yellow part. Now, according to the chain rule, the first time through here, you leave the second function alone. So I'm just going to bring down the g of x unchanged. And then you put a plus, and then you go through it again. The second time through, you leave the yellow function alone. So I'm just going to copy down the f of x and the whole thing is squared. But then this second time around, you take the derivative of the blue function. So now I'm going to multiply by g prime. So this whole thing is an expression for k double prime. We can find k double prime at 4 by plugging in 4 for all of these x's. Now let's go ahead and evaluate using the table. 
So we have two times f at four, and then uh, let's see, f at four is four. So we have two times four. And then we have times f prime at four. f prime at four is three. And then we have times g at four. g at four is negative three. And then we have plus f at four squared. Let's see, f at four is four. So this is gonna be four squared. I think I'm going to just go ahead and put 16. So I don't need to do that on a later step. And then we have times g prime at four. g prime at four is two. This simplifies down to negative 72 plus 32, which is less than zero. So here is your summary and justification. K is concave down at x equals four because K double prime is negative. Part C, let m be the function defined by m of x equals 5x to the third power plus the integral from 0 to x of f prime at t dt. Find m at 2. Show the work that leads to your answer. To find m at 2, we start by substituting 2 for both of these x's. Notice that we do not substitute anything for these t's. This is sort of a dummy variable. 2 to the third power is 8, and 8 times 5 is 40. That brings us to this definite integral. To evaluate this, we start by finding the antiderivative of the integrand. The antiderivative of f prime is simply f, f of t. Um, but we then apply the limits of integration from 0 to 2. So now we have m at 2 is equal to 40 plus. This means we need to find the value at the upper limit of integration minus the value at the lower limit. So this will be f at 2 minus f at 0. f at 2 is 7 and f at 0 is 10. So we have 40 plus 7 minus 10. You could actually stop here if you wanted to, or you can put m at 2 equals 37. Part D. Is the function m defined in part c increasing, decreasing, or neither at x equals 2? Justify your answer. According to our memorized information, the original function will be increasing when the first derivative is positive, and decreasing when the first derivative is negative. So m will be increasing at x equals 2 if m prime at 2 is positive, and decreasing if m prime at 2 is negative. It will be neither if m prime at 2 is equal to 0 or if it's undefined. Well, it sounds like we are going to need an expression for m prime. The derivative of this first term, of course, will be 15x squared. Hmm, how do we take the derivative of an integral defined function? We can find the derivative of an integral defined function using the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which has a general case and a simpler common case. We can use the common case when the lower limit of integration is just a number and the upper limit is just x. This integral defined function does fit the common case, so this is going to be super easy. The derivative of a common case integral defined function is simply the integrand, except you replace the dummy variable with the real variable. So f of t simply becomes f of x. In this case, the integrand is f prime. So we're just going to bring that down but instead of putting t, we will put x. So that's it. This is the derivative of this integral defined function. To evaluate m prime at 2, we start by substituting 2 for both of these x's. 
So now we have this. 4 times 15 is 60, and f prime at 2 is negative 8. This sum is positive. So here's the summary and justification. m is increasing at x equals 2 because m prime at 2 is positive.